Hey everybody, Brooklyn in the house, back at you to do a Someone Needs to Hear This Read. So it's for all signs, whoever resonates with it, all right? And it's timeless. Whenever you come across it is when you're meant to see it. Here we go. It's with an attitude of gratitude. I would humbly like to thank Source, the Archangels, Ascended Masters, Spirit, and my ancestors for overseeing this act of divination. Spirit, please help me to relate clear and concise messages for the higher good of the collective for whoever needs to hear this. Please and thank you. Here we go, guys. Show me what... Okay. Something you're not looking at purposely. This is denial. This is knowing that there's something there, but refusing to see what it is. Okay, it's purpose... Excuse me, it's purposely not looking at something. Uh, deciding to move away to calmer waters instead. Okay, Six of Swords talks about sorrow and transition. It's also a card of uh, moving on, departure, accepting your lessons, grabbing your swords, and getting away from the drama. It's at the foundation of this. It's at the foundation of this. Please and thank you. Okay, at the foundation, taking a time out, a pause, time to reflect, uh, maybe spending time alone to think about how other people look at things or other people's points of view. You have a Knight of Wands crowning you, Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. Uh, this is somebody who's younger or immature. They're not very committal, male or female, okay? The Knight of Wands talks about somebody who's like a player, a daredevil. They, they, they're very suave. Uh, but like I said, in and out. It's brave, it's straightforward. Show me. Coming into your future, but you don't see Aries energy, the emperor. Some kind of power, some kind of um, strength. This is all four kings in one embodiment of the best of their attributes and then some. Uh, the emperor is structure, authority, being logical, practical. Show me. What's the supporting card for the emperor? Aries energy. You have... The Hierophant, so some kind of legality, some kind of traditionalism, institutionalism, some kind of whatever is the norms of society. The Hierophant could be a judge or somebody that can make a decision for you. This could be religious. you got the Queen of Swords in your environment, Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. So this is the thinking queen, right? This is somebody who's very logical. This is somebody who's uh, honest, um, a quick thinker, very articulate, um, independent, fair. Objective, smart, assertive, show me. Okay, so you have the High Priestess. You're going to have to use your intuition on this one. This is Pisces energy, okay? This is the High Priestess, you know, she is somebody who is spiritual, uh, male or female, um, creative. They're very intuitive, like I said. So you could be inspired over here with this Two of Wands to do something about this. This is inspiration. The Two of Wands talks about planning, decision-making, taking risks, uh, leaving your comfort zone and going out to try new things, making decisions. You have the Four of Wands. It could be about something, some kind of decision that you want to make towards your um, happiness. The Four of Wands is stability. It's an Aries card again, harmony, prosperity, peace in the situation. So here we go. Let's clarify. Show me this denial. What is with the denial over here? Please and thank you. Can I have the two of swords? Cards for the two of swords, please. Please and thank you. So eight of wands, some kind of fast information is coming in. The eight of wands is a card of swift activity. So whether it's phone calls, texts, people going to see each other, but <clears throat> it's communication. Swift communication. You have the five of wands in reverse. The Five of Wands in reverse talks about some kind of trickery, so maybe some somebody contradicting you, maybe some kind of litigation. Um, the Five of Wands also talks about conflict or tension. It could be arguments, aggression. But in reverse, we're talking about uh, avoiding conflict, some kind of relief from the tension. So you could be getting some kind of information that's going to smooth things over with the Five of Wands in reverse. Leo energy. Okay. You got the lovers. So Gemini energy. There's some kind of choice you're going to have to make here. Okay. Like I said, Gemini energy. The lovers is a choice, really. Show me. 
Six of Swords. What's the Six of Swords? What's the Six of Swords, please and thank you. Um, <clears throat> show me the Six of Swords, please and thank you. Thank you. You have the King of Cups. All right, so Cancer, Pisces, or Scorpio. The King of Cups, this is the dad of all the kings, male or female, somebody who's wise, devoted, affectionate, kind, loving, protective. Could be somebody that's a little needy. Cancer, Pisces, or Scorpio, I said. You do have the King and the Queen of Cups. So this is, you know, this is the mom and the dad. So this is a divine counterpart that you might have to make a choice about. You'll be coming out of conflict with them. <clears throat> Water energy. Oh, yeah, look at this. That's to do with something about your happy life, happy, you know, ultimate happiness. The Ten of Cups is ultimate happiness, no matter how you look at it. So you're going to have to make a choice about your happiness. Now, this is the Three of Swords in reverse. The Three of Swords in reverse talks about some kind of reconciliation, uh, compromise, you know, leaving past resentments, regrets in the past, where they belong. Huh. The Three of Swords in Reverse also talks about some kind of confusion, distraction, or loss. You do have an Ace of Cups, so that's really good. That's some kind of joy, happiness, and contentment. Yeah, you come in at some kind of conflict with somebody here, people, all right? Uh, and it is your divine counterpart, and there is a lot of love in this situation. And this is going to bring you contentment and happiness. Show me. All right. So, Eight of Swords in Reverse. The Eight of Swords in Reverse talks about uh, some kind of difficulty that you may have been going through. The Eight of Swords in Reverse also talks about uh, some kind of freedom or surrender, a release of some kind. You got the Ten of Swords. It could be a release of some kind of burdens you had here. Oh, my God. It could be a release of some kind of defeat, some kind of failure. It could be a release of bitterness. It could be a release of... Uh, some kind of a loss, like the feeling of loss. It's a destructive ending. It's painful. You've got a king of wands, Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. This is the stern king, somebody who's head over heart. They don't let their emotions cloud their judgment. Um, they just as soon cut your head off as look at you, right? Um, there is a four of wands. So that's stability and happiness. That's harmony. That's peace. That's prosperity. The four of wands talks about um, stability. Like I said, it's an Aries energy. Somebody could be coming in to offer you a cup of emotions with this knight of cups. Okay, the Knight of Cups talks about somebody who's charming, it's uh, maybe a mediator, some kind of romantic idealist, but they're coming in to offer you a cup of emotion, so maybe tell you that they have feelings for you. Show me. Now, you got the Emperor, Aries Energy. Somebody who's powerful, somebody who's organized, somebody who's logical. I mean, all the best attributes of all four kings rolled up into one. That's who this emperor is, right? And then some. Rules the world very successfully, not just an empire. So show me the emperor, please. Show me the emperor. What's going on with the emperor? Thank you. So there's an ending to some kind of situation, right? Death means an ending to a situation. Um, so there could have been some kind of disgruntled feelings between you and somebody over some harsh ending, but it looks like you're coming back around and you guys are going to make up and well, everything's going to be forgiven here. Because death is the ending of one situation, so a new one could start, okay? Because it looks like it's starting towards a, a period of peace here. You got the two of wands. So you're inspired maybe to make this work. This is inspiration. Two of wands is inspired. Could be inspired to make something new work with this person. Too many cards. Hold on, guys. <clears throat> Sorry. Here we go. Show me this two of wands, please, and thank you. Let's put the two of wands. Okay. So, oh boy, seven of swords. It could have been some dishonesty, lies, treachery around you. Uh, the seven of swords talks about betrayal. Sneakiness. This is my card of premeditation, right? This person is purposely skulking around, stealing all the swords so they can collect seven to put in your back. They know what they're doing. They could be stealing, lying, and, you know, definitely doing the most. You got a Knight of Pentacles. Somebody who's Virgo, Capricorn, or Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. The Knight of Pentacles is somebody who's dependable, efficient, hardworking. Uh, some of you could have just started a new financial endeavor. Somebody could be coming in to offer you a job. Something like that. Show me this Knight of Pentacles. Okay, now you have 
You're going to be successful at whatever. If this is a financial endeavor, you have success on your side. Victory. It could be some good news coming in. That's good. You have the Empress now. So again, divine counterpart. Somebody who's fully abundant. Some of you could be having babies or learning about somebody who's having babies. Birthing new ideas. Birthing new businesses. All four queens in one. The best attributes. Rolled up and then some, right? Integrity. Class. Grace. Show me. Okay, the Knight of Swords. So, Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. The Knight of Swords is somebody who would embody... Um, Opinion, they'd be very opinionated, very direct, impatient, focused, daring, articulate. Uh, the Knight of Swords is also somebody who's skilled, brave, straightforward. Two more, please. You got the Page of Wands. So, Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. The Page of Wands is somebody who's usually immature to me, okay? They're energetic. They're fearless. They're extroverted. They're in for a good time, not for a long time. They're usually immature and egotistical. And if this could be somebody from your past with the Six of Cups. The Six of Cups talks about nostalgia, but it's the past. It's memories of the past. You could have memories about somebody like this from your past, and it's causing you a lot of stress, okay? This is a lot of stress. This is sleepless nights, not eating, you know, not sleeping, up with the owls. So let's see what Kipper has to say about this. <clears throat> All right, Kipper, show me. What do you want to say about this? Let's go. <clears throat> all right, we're going to take them all. So you got expectation, 28 or 10. Some of you could be expecting some kind of news information or something. Uh, 35 or 8. There's some kind of new pathway opening up. So if you were in some kind of a shadow period or some kind of a darkness, there's suns being illuminated, butterflies are rebirth. So... That's a really good thing. Some of you could be going on a journey, a vacation, maybe going to see somebody, number 10. There is a main female involved, number two, uh, two. You also have number 22, which is an official person. So this could be somebody in the military or the law, somebody held in high regard, and there could be a marriage on the table, number three. You have 2222 as your numerology code. And at the bottom of the kipper, you have some kind of poverty that somebody may be in, 37 or 10. All right, let's just get you some of these, and we'll get you going. Other signs or uh, moon phases, moonology, please. Give me the moonology on this. Great. Okay, let's see what we have. Communication is key. New moon in Gemini. What do you need to release? The waning moon. We have Pluto here. Confidence is the key to your success, new moon in Leo. A time for healing, balsamic moon. You have Sagittarius, and you also have... Meditate and contemplate. New moon in Pisces. Let me see if I could get you any more. Hold on a second. Here we go. Any more moonology for someone needs to hear this? Do have your commitment is being tested first quarter moon. Okay. Okay. At the bottom of this deck, you have Mars. So Scorpio and Aries. And over here you have balanced spirituality and practicality, full moon and Pisces. Let's get you some of these and we'll let you go. Thank you again for hitting the like and subscribe. It's two situations there. One is these friggin' buttons. And the other one is please don't give your money to anybody on the internet ever. Okay? So I'll thank you in advance for being kind enough to hit the subscribe and the like. I really, really appreciate it. And so does Delilah. And by the way, if nobody told you today, Delilah and I love you. I hid who I really am from you. What else? This is something, you know, the hidden truths. Things that are on people's minds that nobody says. I am not available. Show me. We both know I am not the one for you. You and I were too young. I feel you even though we are apart. What else? Any more hidden truths? Yeah, we got one here. I couldn't let you get close to me. All right, well, that's the story, guys. And I remember every detail of that day. So I hope this helps somebody that needed to hear it. And uh, thank you again for joining me. And thank you ahead of time for hitting the buttons. Always remember, leave with logic and integrity. Act with kindness and love. Let things go. Fear is your enemy because it is an illusion and trust in God because karma is real. Until next time, everyone, love and light.